I'm Craig from Carshalton Advisory. This tutorial series covers the Excel 2016 Expert Curriculum. Download the file linked in the description and let's work through it together as we review Section 2.2, Advanced Conditional Formatting and Filtering. Let's get started. With your linked file open, let's work through some examples of how conditional formatting works. Now, the, the chapter title does say conditional formatting and filtering. There's not actually any filtering uh, included in the notes in this chapter, so uh, it, it's not if you're expecting to learn advanced strategies to filter tables or arrays, that's not going to be included. I guess you can visually filter them because you can highlight the stuff that's important to you. But uh, let's take a look at some of the, the ways that we can use conditional formatting to, to make your life easier and to prepare yourself for the exam. There's actually, I, I really like conditional formatting. Uh, it, it's there's there's all sorts of flexibility you have to present your data better and to bring important factors to your attention uh, to save you time in your work. So let's start with uh, the values that are in total profit, which is column U. I'm going to control shift down arrow to highlight the whole column. Uh, now let's do a um, let's highlight uh, some values here. So we're going to hit Alt H. Uh, we're going to hit L for conditional formatting. We're going to highlight cells, and we want to highlight cells that are greater than. So that's a G. All right, and so what uh, it's going to ask us to do is to format cells that are greater than, and then there's a value here. Now, we can hard code a value here, or we could select a cell uh, that will allow us to change that value over time. But for right now, we're just going to hit 1,000. It already had a number uh, included in it, uh, and so what we'll do is we'll click OK. And now when we look at this column U, any value that is greater than 1,000 is going to be highlighted in red for us and bring it to our attention. Now we could do any any value. We just chose 1,000 to give us an example uh, of the ones that we, that we want to highlight. Uh, let's look at top and bottom rules. So we're going to go into the total column. Again, control shift down arrow highlights all the values that are there. Uh, next, we are going to go Alt H L T for top and bottom rules, and we are going to select P to get the top 10%. Now that's automatically highlighted here. We could modify this uh, to select whatever percent that we want, and we can choose how we want it highlighted. So in this case, um, we want it in green fill with dark green text. Uh, that's a good thing, and, and green is typically more of a good thing indicator. So we'll click OK. And so now what it does is it takes a look at the distribution of all of these values. And if they're in the top uh, decile, it's going to highlight it in green for us. So in total pro profit, it was a magnitude. In this case, it's based on a percentile. So if it's one of the, the top 10%, it is now highlighted for us. Uh, you'll notice there is some overlap between the two, but there's some that are in the top 10% uh, that actually aren't over in the highest profit. So there's a little bit uh, of a, it's highlighting a little bit of a difference between total cost and, and what the, the margin's going to be. Next, we're going to look at uh, data bars. So we're going to go into column P, which is units. We'll select that column here. We will hit Alt H. Uh, L for conditional formatting, and D for data bars. There are some examples already shown here, and as I highlight it, you can see a live update of how that's going to look on my workbook. Uh, so let's go light blue here. And so now, what Excel has done is it has uh, the biggest value, so the one with the most number of units, is going to be fully filled. And the smallest one is going to be the smallest field. So it's not necessarily an arbitrary range. It just basically says, hey, whatever the largest magnitude is, is a fully filled cell. And then everything else is a proportion of that. Uh, but now I can quickly see, uh, even if uh, I, I didn't want to bother kind of reading the number, uh, I can quickly take a look visually and see what are my highest number of sales, or excuse me, the largest number of units in a particular day's worth of sales. Color scales is another option for us. So let's go into column S, which is margin. Again, we'll select the data in the column. We will hit Alt H for our home tab, L for conditional formatting, and S will give us color scales. Uh, and let's go, uh, 
Let's go this uh, green, yellow, red is probably the most common. Now, these two are, are very similar. The difference is what is the is green the big or is red the big? So depending on what uh, you want to highlight, you may decide one of those works better for you. In this case, we're going to assume that the, the larger margin is better. So that is good. And I will leave that as green. So when I select that now, what it's done is it's again, it's taken the largest value and it's given it the darkest green color. It's taken the smallest value and given it the uh, lightest, uh, or I guess, excuse me, the reddest color. So it looks like 25 is our smallest number, and that is our darkest red. 65 is our greatest number, and that is our darkest green. So again, now I can quickly take a look and see what are my high margin, what are my low margin items, just visually. And I don't even have to like mentally take a look at the numbers. It's just automatically I know, okay, this is a low margin number. Okay, this is a really high margin sale. So they, they jump right out at me. Lastly, on this page, we will take a look at icon sets. So we'll go into column L, which is the order date. And we will highlight these values. We'll hit Alt H, L for conditional formatting, and I for icon sets. Uh, so we have a whole uh, variety of selections for icon sets. In this case, let's use flags. And so now what it's doing is uh, it's taking the oldest third of these orders and is giving them a, a red flag. The most recent third is getting a green flag and the middle third or kind of anything else is getting this yellow flag. So I can quickly see, okay, these are my oldest orders. Uh, these are my most recent. And maybe I need to make sure these are getting fulfilled or, or follow up some otherwise. Uh, but it, it's a very handy uh, ability, uh, you know, let's say you're tracking receivables uh, and you wanted uh, a quick visual indicator to know which which uh, clients are behind in their payments to you. So now you can use a flag in order to bring that quickly uh, to your attention. Uh, and, and we'll learn um, later on that uh, we can actually customize this a little bit. So it's not just the defaults that Excel gives us. Now there's not just these options. And if we go into our conditional formatting here and, and look at these, you'll notice that we use the greater than, but there's quite a few other options here. We can use less than, between, equal to. Uh, we can do this by text. In our top and bottom rules, we did it by percent. We could also just choose the 10 largest, the bottom, what ones are above, which ones are below, uh, as well as some custom rules. Data bars, we quickly looked at the different uh, views of how it looks. Again, color scales, there's a variety of color scales and multiple icon sets. Uh, so now let's take a look at uh, some custom formatting rules that we can apply. And we'll do that. We'll go on to our next tab here, the format rules. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to highlight an entire row uh, in this array where the region is west. So here's our region. Uh, and so what we don't, I don't want just east highlighted. I want this entire row highlighted. Okay, so let's uh, work through how to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the entire array and I'm going to hold control shift. I'm going to go down arrow, right arrow uh, in order to do that. And so now all of my data is included. I'm going to go to alt H for home, L for conditional formatting. And this time I'm going to hit N for new rule. Uh, so now we have our new rule type, and I'm going to go to the very bottom to use a formula. So I can just arrow down to that. And now we're going to use a formula to determine which cells to format. All right, so how this works, and, 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 and this, is, this gets a little bit tricky, is uh, we want it to, the first thing is going to be the cell we want to check. And then we want to trigger uh, a format when its value makes this statement true. So we are going to check cell M12. OK, so again, we want to go by region. So we'll hit uh, M12 here. And when is it going to be true? Well, it's going to be true when it equals this west here, which is I11. Now, a couple things that we need to do here, because what's going to happen is Excel is going to work through every cell in this array. So what it's going to first start is going to it's going to in cell L12 here. 
what it's going to do is it's going to look at this formula. And so this is saying, okay, so I'm going to look at M12, which is the cell exactly to the right of me, and that says east. Then what it's going to do is it's going to compare east to this value here. Okay, in this case, it is false. Um, if it were true, however, it would format. So let's choose a format here. So here's our option. So let's uh, fill this whole column in, uh, or excuse me, this whole row in orange uh, when that equals west. Now, here's the, I guess, the unintuitive part. So that's what happens when Excel is, is evaluating this L12. Next, it moves over to M12. And so it goes to this formula. Well, you'll notice here that this M12 is not an absolute reference. So Excel is just going to follow the same pattern. It's going to look in the cell to the right, which is the representative column. And, uh, and it's going to compare this to I11 and West, and it's not going to match. So if I left the formula like this, we wouldn't get the results that we want. Uh, so what we need to do is, is assuming we're starting here, or right, we don't need to assume we know because it's highlighted in uh, white here, uh, it's going to look to this cell right next to it. But what I want it to do is only to look in column M. Okay, and I can do that by adding a dollar sign in front of the M. So now it's going to check here, look in M12. Perfect, it checks east. Now it evaluates this cell. Again, it's going to look in cell uh, column M for the same row, compare it to here. Now it's going to go into N. Uh, it's still going to be testing this column M to this value here. Now what happens after it's done this row, it goes down to the next row. So now it's going to be looking at cell L13 here. Now we know that column M is still going to be an absolute reference, so it's still going to be checking the value in this. But now it has also come down a row because I have not made the row number an absolute reference as well. So now as it works its way down, it's always going to be testing the value in this column. And that should give us the result that we want. So let's click OK here and see if we get what we need. OK, perfect. So now we can see it's evaluated this cell. Uh, and in order to do that, it looks in column M and compares. It doesn't match. And so it leaves it normal. And it does that for every cell in this row. Next, it's going to go drop down to the next row and evaluate everything here, always testing against the value in this column. Now, once we get to a row that does have West, um, we notice that it is highlighted in orange for us. Now, we can change this. And in fact, I have it set as a, as a drop down. Uh, and when we've worked on data validation, you would have learned how to do this. And rather than worry about my user spelling central or east or west properly, now there's just a drop down. So they can now hit central. And when I do that, sure enough, now all of the rows that are in the central region are highlighted for me. Uh, east, same thing will work here for us. Uh, so I know that that formula is successfully evaluating these values for me. So this is very powerful. I find it's not super intuitive. And so that, uh, you know, even myself, sometimes I have to iterate once or twice to get it to behave exactly how I want. But kind of the best rule of thumb I found is that, okay, the first thing is the cell that you're evaluating. The after the equal sign is to trigger a format when the following or when the value makes a statement true. So this is my kind of the way I think of it in order to help me remember how to uh, to get these to work in my first or sometimes second attempt. Uh, you know, don't forget those absolute references. Last, what we're going to do go through is how to manage or edit these rules once we've set them up so we don't have to rely on Excel's defaults for all of this. So let's go to the Manage Rules tab here, uh, worksheet of our workbook here at the end. Uh, and we'll go into column S, which is the margin column. I'm going to select these values. We'll go Alt-H uh, for Home, L for Conditional Formatting, R for Manage Rules, and then we'll hit Alt-E to edit it. All right, so now down here at the bottom is where we edit this three-color scale. So I can change the style here from a three color scale to a two color to data bar to other things, but we're gonna leave it as a three color scale. What I want to do though is to change uh, what the midpoint is. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift this midpoint to 0.6, okay? 
uh, and we're going to change our maximum from a highest value to a number. So now our maximum is going to be 1. So anything that's 1 is going to be fully green. We're going to shift our midpoint from 0.5 to 0.6, and we will leave the minimum as lowest value. So let's take a look here, and we'll hit OK. And we'll select Apply. All right, so now when we look in this margin column, let me zoom out a little bit so we can see it a little more of it at once. Now you notice there isn't any green in here anymore. So so let's say that, you know what, 65% margin isn't really what I'm after. So I don't want to have this highlighted green when I send this report to my uh, my supervisor or my manager. Uh, what I want to show is that, hey, these, these ones at 65% are, are OK. Uh, they're getting closer to, to what we expect. Um, but they're still not green yet. So now 65% is a uh, is is highlighted in yellow rather than green. Now, if someone uh, had a margin of 100%, so let's just try that here. Sure enough, um, it's going to be highlighted in dark green for me. Or let's say it's 80%. Uh, you know, again, it gets more and more to that green color. So you don't have to rely on Excel's defaults for this. You can. Uh, make adjustments to how this is done. Uh, we can do this the same thing with the order date. So if I highlight this and hit Alt H L R, uh, there's my icon set. I'm going to hit Alt E in order to edit it. And so now it shows me the icon styles. And then here is where I can adjust. So again, it's showing anything that's in the uh, the top third percentile is going to show me a green flag. But I could actually change this from percent. I could change this to a number. And then I could have a date range in here so that if it's more than a certain number of days, it's going to get a red flag. Or if it's less than a certain number of days, I can um, reverse this. Um, so instead of uh, green being on the right, I can change it to uh, red being at the top, green being at the bottom. Uh, as well. Uh, here's one where we can show the, the, the icon only. So let's try that here. So I've reversed these flags. I'm showing icon only and we'll hit OK and apply. And so now you'll see I only have the flags here. So I don't if I really don't care about the date, um, I just want to know if it's a certain age. Well, now I know that anything that's red is what I need to pay attention for. So there is a lot of uh, ability, a lot of flexibility built into Excel. Uh, I think the uh, examples in the chapter here are actually pretty good for this. It does make you work a little bit to figure all of these out. And uh, so I, I hope you take the time to, to go through the chapter, uh, to go through the practice task so that you'll be prepared for the exam. Uh, if this has been valuable for you, please let me know by a comment. Otherwise, a thumbs up or a subscribe is, is very valuable, uh, both to let me know that I, this has been helpful, but also it, it lets uh, YouTube know that these are, are good videos and helps direct other uh, YouTube users to help find them. Uh, anyways, this is Craig with Carshalton Advisory. Thanks for watching.